Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Interview. I am here joined by Mr. Ryan Rodenbach, the Head of Business Development of APAC of Trust Token. Welcome, sir. Hey, thanks for having me today. So before we get on with Trust Token, would you care to give a brief introduction about introduction about yourself and what you do? Sure. So uh, Ryan Rodenbach, you know, lived in the United States for most of my life and uh, joined Trust Token back in March as one of the first employees and have been working on our business development initiatives ever since. So um, in your own words, how would you define Trust Token or TUSD? Yeah. So Trust Token, pretty generally, we are a you know, platform for tokenizing real world assets. Mm -hmm. And the first asset that we've tokenized is TUSD, so true USD. Mm -hmm. You can think of it as just tokenized US dollars. Mm -hmm. But then uh, when it comes to uh, stable coins or stable, to stable tokens, uh, there, are, there are a lot, but not all of them seems to be um, very original. It, it re all of them just are a bit similar to each one of, one of each, each other. So uh, what's the originality behind TUSD? What's original about it? Yeah, so you know, I, I definitely caveat. There are sort of three models of stable coins. Uh, we fall into the fiat collateralized or asset backed model. And so really the, the model comes from Tether USDT. They launched in 2014 as the first you know, real big stable coin, sort of came to prominence in 2017, 2018. But the fundamental flaw with them was sort of around two things. One was that they had not been transparent about the US dollars backing their token. Mm -hmm. And then the second was that it is not easy to create or redeem USDT with US dollars. Mm -hmm. And so our sort of you know, novel thing that we brought to the table was being extremely transparent about you know, where our funds are held, how they're managed, and you know, putting out monthly reports on how much we have back in them. Mm -hmm. And then two, making the creation and redemption process to go either from US dollars to TUSD or TUSD to US dollars as easy as humanly possible. So management, pro management system infrastructure, that's something I'm curious about. Yeah. So if you have the numbers in your head, mm -hmm. How much does the uh, trust token fund or the TUSD is backed by USD in your uh, custody accounts maybe? And uh, how is the process, how does the process take place when it comes to issuing new tokens? When a maybe, user makes a deposit maybe? Yeah, so I think right now the number is 210 million. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you look at coin market cap and you look at the circulating supply, that number will always match one to one with what we have held in our bank accounts. Uh, and so that will that will always be the case. So can anyone look into it? Yes. So there isn't a way to do it like 24-7. <laughs> yeah, know, of course, of course. Yeah, we're, we're actually working on that, though. We're working with uh, an accounting firm in the U.S. to get 24-7 reporting. Mm -hmm. But right now, the way we do it is once a month, usually uh, I think it's the last Friday or first Monday or something of the month, mm -hmm. we will have a third-party accounting firm come in. In this case, it's Cohen & Company in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And they will you know, actually go into the accounts, look at what the you know, funds held there are, and make sure that that matches up with what's circulating on the exchanges. Mm -hmm. And then every month on our website, blog.trusttoken.com, we'll post those reports. And we actually have a doc on there that has all of the reports going back to when we first launched. So transparency system, it's awesome. But then um, what I, I had a struggle of you know, understanding was usually when people encounter cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. they usually see it as a speculative means of investment, right? Of but then stablecoin is something different. It's a way of hedging or hedging your volatility against the volatile market of the cryptocurrency or maybe other than that. But then what could be the usage of stable coins in your own words then? Yeah. I mean, so the number one use across the board and how we see it used most often now is as a hedge against the volatility of cryptocurrencies, right? You know, I mean, I've made the joke, I wish I had moved all of my crypto into a stable coin, you know, at like, you know, the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. <laughs> uh, I think most people can, can sympathize with yeah, that. Yeah, 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 me also. <laughs> yeah, also then as a trading pair on exchanges. And so, you know, if you go on Binance now, you know, which many people consider to be the big, biggest exchange in the world, yes. they have got their pairs denominated in TUSD. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can think if you're trading, say, NEO, you know, if you're saying trading NEO over BTC, that's very confusing, you know, because it's going to be like 0 0.00 something. Yeah. But if you're trading NEO to TUSD, it's very simple because you're thinking, okay, NEO yeah, is dollar $30, and yes, I'm giving one for 30. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's probably the two biggest ways we see it used. We also see a uh, number of emerging use cases. Mm -hmm. One of them is around remittances. And so, you know, Bitcoin has long been hailed as, you know, a great 
uh, use case for remittances or store of value. Oh, yes. But in but in reality, if you actually wanted to store your value, you know, TUSD is probably the best way to do that. Yeah, because you never know if you per se if you invest your life savings on Bitcoin, you know, you never know where it's, where it's going to go, right? Exactly. And so, you know, if you have a treasure that's loaded up with TUSD, you know, and you're in Venezuela or, or Argentina, that really is like a decentralized U.S. bank, right? You have a U.S. bank account. You know, in your pocket with the equivalent of U.S. dollars on it. Mm -hmm. That you know, if you just come to our website and pass KYC AML, you can actually move back into U.S. dollars. But then arbit arbitrage trading trading is impossible when it comes to stable coins, right? Uh, yes and uh, no. Actually, actually, it's not a yes and no. It's it, it's no. So so it, it definitely is possible. So we work with with a number of these folks, and they're on board and they trade a lot of TUSD. And so even though TUSD is intended to stay the dollar, mm -hmm. you know. You could not actually keep it at a dollar without doing some sort of market manipulation or artificially. And so there are definitely times where it goes a little bit below a dollar or a little bit below, above a dollar. So whether that's 0 0.998, 0 0.002, 0 0.005, 0 0.995 or something. Well, it's nothing like huge, like 10% of swings or something. Yeah, no, no, nothing huge. Um, you know, we have had large swings upwards that we've never had a large swing down. Well, it, it's a good thing that it goes up, but then when it goes down, it's something of a problem then, right? Right. You know, and, and the reason, you know, I think it's gone as high as like a dollar ten, dollar twenty, dollar thirty, or something. Um, and that was when we were a lot smaller, and you know, a lot of these arbitragers weren't in the system yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they're they're definitely the most frequent traders of TUSD. So uh, when it comes to stable coins, uh, they stay on the one dollar line, right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, what? Does make it move? Is it the arbitrage? Is it the trading? Or is it the uh, U.S. like stocks? Or so what's it related to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so definitely intended to stay at a dollar, but there are going to be times where there's price pressure, you know, going too much either way, mm -hmm. right? And so you know, the, the example is when we first announced that we were listing on Binance back in May. Mm -hmm. uh, there are all these sort of like Twitter scraping algo bots, <laughs> and so as soon as Binance announces it's about to list a coin. Mm -hmm these bots will go and buy up all of that cryptocurrency on other exchanges. Oh. And so at the time, and this is back in May, um, people were just programmatically buying up all of the TUSD on Bittrex. Mm -hmm. And since there was so much buying pressure and no selling pressure, the price went up to like $1.40 or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it eventually came back down. So um, since uh, you mentioned about the, how the issue of, well, uh, let me go again. So you mentioned about how the process, well, per se a trader, increases its, its demand for a TUSD, then you guys would have to issue more tokens, right? Well, we, we, we wouldn't just issue them uh, you know, without the, the dollars backing them up first. Mm -hmm. um, the way that it works basically now, and you know, sort of to give it the, the way that I usually describe this, is that you know, if you're ever on the exchange and you see TUSD trading at below a dollar, right? so let's say this has never happened, but let's say TUSD is trading at 90 cents, you should take all of your cryptocurrency, buy as much of that TUSD at 90 cents as possible, mm -hmm. and then just come to our website and you can always you know, kind of sell it back to us for a dollar. Mm -hmm. right? You just make a quick 10% profit there. So you guys 100% back that it will stay on the $1 line, right? Yeah, 100%. And one of the ways that we ensure that is that we don't actually manage the, our own funds. Mm -hmm. So we work with third-party trust companies in the US that actually manage and escrow the US dollars. Mm -hmm. And so even if we, you know, we don't, but if for some reason we did want to issue TUSD without backing it up first, we wouldn't be able to because there is that middle step there of the trust company. So when it comes to stable coins, there is no uh, like supply cap, right? Correct. I mean, I, I, I've joked effectively the supply cap is the total supply of US dollars, right? And so <laughs> a couple trillion. So a customer uh, sends you money or dollars, uh, US dollars, and you guys would check the dollars that you received on in your accounts and then issue the tokens on behalf of the funds that you received, right? Yes, yeah, you asked this question before, I realized I kind of didn't answer it, but you know, sort of the way that the flow of funds works is that you, know, you come to our website, pass a KYC AML check, once you're approved, then you will send in a bank wire. So let's say you send in a bank wire for $1,000. Uh, that $1,000 will you know, kind of be sent over to our, our trust company, and then once that wire settles, you know, within 15 minutes, we will send back TUSD to the Ethereum address that you give us. Uh, so then it could be assumed that you guys are fighting for the pie of US dollars, right? With Tether and like USDC and like TUSD. So uh, what would be the uh, competitive like strategy you would take or the advantage that, ha that TUSD has over other uh, incumbent competitors out there? Yeah, so right now, we are all sort of fighting for exchange volumes. Mm -hmm. And on that front, we're doing great. So, you know, Tether is obviously, you know, they've been around for a long time. They're much larger than us and uh, their volumes are still killing it. 
But uh, on our side, we've really seen our volumes tick up over the past uh, couple months. So I think probably for the month of January, we'll do a cumulative for the month of January, $2 billion worth of volume. Mm -hmm. And we did about one and a half billion last month. Mm -hmm. And so it is sort of, we're fighting for the pie in that sense. And like, you know, we all want to take volume from each other. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's so many other use cases for stable coins that it's possible that, you know, one stable coin could be the dominant stable coin for exchanges. One could be the dominant for remittances. One could be the dominant for something else. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it all plays out. I mean, frankly, the, the past six months in terms of you know, stable coins have been pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, in September, we had GUSD, USDC, and PAX launch. You know, I never could have guessed that would have happened eight mm -hmm. months ago. So, uh, Speaking of uh, exchange volumes, uh, Trust Token just hired a executive from Coinbase uh, as the head of compliance, am I correct, to the uh, Trust Token uh, Corporation? Yes. So uh, would that ha could that have taken place in ex expanding the uh, exchange volumes, or what is her role in the company? Yeah, so uh, we, we just hired uh, Vishali from Coinbase, uh, excellent hire. I haven't actually met her in person yet since I've, I've been in Asia. <laughs> it's kind of weird talking about somebody you haven't met. It is, it is, it is a little bit weird, so uh, sorry if I misrepresent anything. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, listen, we have had such a strong focus on legal and compliance since we first started the company mm -hmm. because it's so obvious that that is really what has sort of been Tether's downfall. It's been the lack of oversight, compliance, and really these things that in a normal company are not... Uh, you know, front of mind. Mm -hmm. But in a cryptocurrency company where you're dealing with U.S. dollars, you know, you have to make sure that you're buttoned up on on everything. Yeah. And you know, Vishali was a was a clear hire from her experience at Coinbase. They've got some of the best crypto compliance in the world. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, based in U.S., right? Yes. So uh, our our entire team is based in San Francisco. So, and then how's the compliance coming along? Because uh, compare so one well, China just released like harsh regulation on the crypto market and. Uh, I heard on the news that the state of Wyoming uh, decided to define virtual currencies as money. So uh, it's a good heading. But yep. then uh, from the, uh, I mean, you're head of business, business development at APAC, but <laughs> still wondering, like, how's the compliance issues in the United States locally? I think part of what we're seeing in the U.S. is that at the, the federal or at the, the national level, we haven't gotten extremely clear guidance of how to move forward on a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. And so this is why you're starting to see states do state by state regulation. So Wyoming, New York, um, I think Delaware, each of these states are, have made their own sort of statements or claims of, of how they think things should work. Mm -hmm. At the national level, it, it, it would make things a lot easier if we were given some sort of like, hey, stable coins are classified as X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. You know, we have gotten different legal opinions for you know, why we think they're not a security, et cetera. But uh, yeah, I, there, there isn't great guidance at the national level. And uh, you think the, uh, once the government shutdown of the United States ends, uh, the SEC will move a little bit faster to provide some clearance when it comes to legal infrastructure? It's possible. But I mean, I'd also venture that now that the shutdown is you know, going on almost a month, yeah. that <laughs> you know, cryptocurrency is interesting to these people, uh, you know, the SEC or, or wherever. But, there's other things that are way more important. And I'm sure that they've got an even bigger backlog at this point now. So, so uh, you are the head of business development of APAC, which means that Trust Token is planning to expand to the Asian region as well. Yes. So uh, finishing up on the interview, would you care to share us your future plans on expanding to the Asian region? Yes. So basically what happened was I had been in the US for my first six months or so at the company. And then I came out here in September, and it was clear how much faster things are moving in Asia, mm -hmm. whether Korea, Hong Kong, you know, Singapore, or wherever. And you know, I just sort of relocated as soon as possible after that. Mm. Right now, you know, specifically in Korea, there's still a lot of Korean exchanges that we have yet to list on. So we're currently listed on Upbit and deep in the conversations with you know, the other three or four biggest about getting listed on there. So uh, you know, having conversations on that sense now, also looking to increase our support in the Korean you know, trading and OTC community. We've had a lot of great meetings with folks um, in that realm. And from there, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, really just looking to keep growing on that community side. I mean, Tether is yet to come into Korea, so I hope Trust Token uh, TUSD seems a gross, uh, like, great expansion within our local community as well. I think part of the reason for that is that uh, the Korean government has been pretty strict in terms of you know what they want to allow in the in the cryptocurrency markets. And, yes, indeed. You know, it's 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 there's good reason why they wouldn't want to allow USDT. And so we're hoping that we can make good inroads there. Well, that is all the questions we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Ryan Rodenbach, the head of business development at Trust Token. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.